The gut is populated with bacteria that impact many aspects of host physiology, such as nutrition, susceptibility to pathogens, inflammatory disease, and even behavior. Despite this broad importance, it has been tough to find underlying mechanisms because we lack genetic tools for bacteria from the microbiota. In most cases, tools built for E. coli or other model organisms don't work. In this study, we focused on the most abundant genus in the gut of healthy Americans, the Bacteroides. Our goal was to turn microbiome genes on and off in the gut. This would allow testing of when and how specific microbiome gene products impact the host. The gene expression system we built combines two parts. First, we started with Bacteroides promoters that drive expression of the 16S rRNA genes. These promoters are highly conserved and highly active. Next, we borrowed TET operators from the TN10 transposon. These sequences recruit the TET repressor to DNA, blocking gene expression. TET repressor activity can then be controlled by anhydrotetracyclin, or ATC. The hard part was now figuring out how to put these two pieces together. For this, we use sequence alignment to identify possible sites for inserting or substituting TET operators into the native promoter. Then, a lot of trial and error to see what worked. Using Bacteroides Theta Iota Omicron as our test organism, in the on state, expression from this system spans the entire native range of gene expression in this organism. In the off state, gene expression is off, to the point where we can encode a highly toxic gene product in the genome and cells grow normally, until ATC is added. Because ATC is not present in gut microbes, mice, or their diets, we can now use this system to control microbiome gene expression inside the gut of a mouse. To demonstrate the utility of this system, we focused on sialic acid, a sugar liberated from the gut mucosa by sialidases expressed by certain commensal bacteria. However, a balance of producers and consumers keeps free sialic acid low, which is important because sialic acid is a nutrient source for certain antibiotic-associated pathogens. Interestingly, antibiotics lead to an increase in levels of free sialic acid. But how fast the levels of sialic acid change in response to microbiome sialidase activity, and how antibiotics increase free sialic acid levels, are unknown. To address this, we colonized germ-free mice with B theta iota omicron with its sialidase under the control of our inducible promoter. We then pulsed the mice with ATC to activate sialidase expression and watched what happened. From this study, we learned two things. First, sialic acid remains in the gut for several days after sialidase is gone, possibly providing a window for pathogens to invade. Second, we were surprised to see that varying levels of sialidase activity produce the same levels of free sialic acid. In other words, sialic acid release is a substrate-limited process. This may explain the antibiotic effect, that reducing sialic acid consumers without changing free sialic acid can shift the community into a pathogen-sensitive state. This is just one example of using the inducible promoter to probe microbiome-host interactions, and we can imagine many more. For example, how quickly does the host respond to changes in microbiome-encoded signaling molecules? Or how long do microbiome-derived molecules remain in the circulatory system? And can we use the microbiome to conditionally deliver therapeutics or missing enzymes? Hopefully, tools for controlling gene expression in the microbiome will provide answers to these and other questions.